calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. The Gardener Masterclass is proudly brought to you by Stark Airs HydroCash, an innovative water-wise gardening solution. Carbon load your garden and help retain water for your plants as they need it. And Gardena, realize your gardening dreams with innovative, high-quality gardening tools. Feel your passion every season. Good morning, all you beauties. Um, it's great to be back with you. It's 11 o'clock on a Thursday and it is Thursday. There have been so many public holidays. I don't know what week it is. In fact, can you believe it's May? But it's a good month. Why? Well, number one, really good people are born in May and just on the cusp of May, like just before. Um, but never mind, never mind, never mind. It's my birthday on Saturday. It's my birthday. But I'm getting a bit old. So I think I'm 35 plus that. Am I? Yeah, I'm just checking here if they agree. 35 plus VAT, uh, you can work that one out. Actually, I don't know. Guys, welcome to um, The Gardener Live. Uh, guys, remember, if you want to comment, please go to The Gardener Facebook page or on YouTube. You can watch us live stream. And for those of you who are going to be watching a little bit later when you're back from work, um, welcome and thank you for joining us for this hour. Now, guys, this is a big topic. Okay? This is, this is a, like a... Books have been written about this, entire books. Um, so, so we're going to go through some basics because it's the basics where you get it wrong. It's like anything. It's like building a house. If the foundation is not right, and talking about foundations and flood relief, and yeah, we've seen it all in, in the last few weeks. Um, but uh, folks, it's just like a house. If you don't get the basics right, and the basics are really simple. No rock star stuff. No weird stuff. It's really, really simple. Um, and if you stick with me and you follow those, I, I really know that you will one day be able to pick a nectarine, pick a beautiful lemon that's warmed in the sun, that you'll be able to get your apples and your plums and your pears and maybe even a bunch of grapes. Now, I know the monkey thing is a thing. Um, I'm not answering any questions about monkeys today. Um, because we all know that we've encroached on their space, that they live with us. You can hang CDs, you can make loud noises, you can pretend that you've got something long like a broomstick in your hand, which aka also looks like a gun and they might run away. But you are not going to get rid of them. So ways to combat that is to put some bird netting over or cover them or put them in a, a tunnel if you're growing your fruit trees. But guys, this is the fact. We have to live with them. But before we get on to the real stuff of fruit trees, I need to introduce Laurel and Hardy to you. Now, Laurel and Hardy was one of my favorite programs growing up. Um, I don't think there was even sound. No, they just like go dunk, 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 and they do like really silly stuff. Kind of like um, the modern day, may I say the word, um, jackass. You, you know, yeah, you've Googled that. You've seen that. They do insane things like putting their mate inside something and shooting them off or putting them on a bicycle and make them like go down the hill with no brakes and you know what's going to happen but you can't stop watching you like look with one eye anyway laurel and hardy we were down uh, we went up to mtanzini to go and look at the beautiful forests you might have seen the post on on my facebook page and man did we have an absolute beautiful time of course there's a second hand shop and of course i've got to go into the second hand shop Ta -da -ta -da. 
I present Laurel and Hardy. Who's Laurel and who's Hardy? I have no idea. But they're really big, hey? They're really big. They're terribly fugly. Um, but I just, <laughs> I mean, come on. They're so kitsch. <laughs> they're, they're terribly kitsch. Kitsch but cute, you know? Um, what can I say? Um, yeah. I, 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 that, come on, I know you like them. Well, thank goodness they've got clothes on. Because, you know, some garden gnomes don't have clothes on. But anyway, let's not go there. That's another program on the dark web. But anyway, guys, um, it's wonderful to be with you. Let's take a look and see who's here this morning. Um, Jashmil, good morning. Beanie, good morning from Namibia. Um, Ruan Pele, good to have you with us again from Johannesburg South. Yeah, you're getting a little bit chillers there now, hey? Fabian, good morning from Durban. It's a beautiful day here, guys. It is spectacular. Blue skies. Um, little crisp in the morning. Not so crisp that you need to wear a jersey. Um, but, oh, it's great gardening weather. Man, it, it like itches. For me to sit at my computer, or when I do, uh, at my desk, when I do, uh, is really hard work. It's really, really hard work because I just want to get out there. Um, Debbie, good morning from Leisure Bay. Um, Vanessa, good morning to you. Um, and I hope you're watching this because you were watching the, um, the pre-videos, which are from the home channel. Um, so uh, let's see who else. Oh, we've got a whole lot more people that have just joined. Joy, good morning from Cryfontaine. Good morning, good morning. Jashmir, good morning. Um, uh, Kirsten Evans, good morning from Cape Town. And Karen de Jong from a sunny Pretoria. So we're talking fruit from your trees. We're talking harvesting and... Uh, what better way than a beautiful, a beautiful lemon? Um, and you know, you can't have one lemon tree in your garden. It's like, it, it's just not acceptable. You have to have a few. Um, not only does one tree look like on its own, but you just, you need a lot. You need, definitely need more than one. Um, to allow for great production. And of course, you could then go with a Eureka or a Maya. But I'm not going to get into lemons because, guys, we did an entire program. Um, and if you go down on my, on my YouTube and you look for another Facebook Live um, on citrus, you will see that we did an entire thing on lemons, on pruning, on, on all those bits. So, mm. But before we get going, I want to show you this creature over here. Now, yesterday we um, were, had to go out to Richmond and there was this beautiful hedge growing along the side of the road. And of course we had to stop and break off a piece because this, folks, is probably the origin of almost all citrus. Um, and you can see it's full of thorns, deadly thorns. Um, really impenetrable barrier can be made with this. This is what we call security hedging at its best. Because I tell you, you try and run through that, something's got to give. Um, and this is the citrus mitis. And citrus mitis is, is the origin and it's one of the, the original, what we call pure forms of the citrus. And from there, this is where many of our hybrids were created, which we enjoy in our gardens today. And in fact, most of this, most of the fruit trees, especially the citrus that we buy, um, from our local garden center has been grafted onto this. Okay, did you hear that? Most of the citrus that we buy has been grafted onto this. Which is why those people that ask me, can I grow an avo from a pip? Can I grow a lemon from a pip? Can I grow an apple from a pip? Of course you can. Knock yourself out. 100%. Yes, you can. But caramba, you're in for a long haul. Uh, you're going to have to wait many, many years to maybe get one, two miserable fruit. Um, seven years for an ever. Seven years. I mean, no, no. So the reason why this all happens, I'm going to explain a little bit later. And I'm going to give you some really good tips on and some perfect examples of when it goes wrong. Okay, when it goes wrong. And that's normally when you come marching into a garden center with a piece of a branch or a damaged fruit or rotting fruit and you say, what can I do? And the, the thing is, folks, 
at that point, it's too late. Okay, it's too late. It really is too late at that point. So it's important that we remedy a lot of those things, that we, we catch them before it all happens. And there are lots of ways that we can get around this. But when your fruit is rotting, when it's been stung, when there's a little worm crawling out to say, hi, ah, it's too late. So we've got to remedy before then. But most importantly, some of the mistakes that we make are the real basics. So come along with me over here and we're going to show you um, some of the, the very simple, simple procedures. Now, most times when we're planting, when we buy a fruit tree, whether we buy a lemon tree, a peach or a pear or whatever it is, these are the basics that I want you to get right. And it's so important, guys, that whatever the size of the bag, okay? So let's have a look here. There's a bag. That's a lychee tree. Um, in the back, I've got some really big um, plums, apples, all right? Big bags. The rule is very, very simple. The rule is simple. You dig your hole, double the depth of the nursery bag and double the width of the nursery bag. Double the depth, double the width. Okay, you're gonna keep the topsoil. The topsoil that you remove, you're gonna keep. Your subsoil can go. In that, you're gonna mix a good amount of compost, a really, really good amount of compost. And importantly, you're gonna add in a whole lot of this stuff, all right? You're gonna add in a whole lot of bone meal. Now. For one fruit tree, if I was planting this lychee, I would go with at least four or five handfuls. Um, and, you know, you can't, you can't ever put too much. Okay, really, you, you can't ever add too much. So, go with the bone meal. This is a sterilized bone meal. Um, what does that mean? It means it's got no other the bad hojos in it. It's been taken care of. But it's going to give your plant an important and available amount of phosphates, which increases good root production. Okay, so that goes into the hole with your compost. You're going to mix that all up. Then you're going to put your fruit tree into the hole. Okay, now some of you might have read that you water the hole the night before. Absolutely. If you are that prepared and you've planned that far ahead, um, then go for it. Then definitely fill the hole the night before and let that water just drain away. When planting the tree, remove the bag as carefully as possible from the from the, the plant or the, the nursery bag. And it's, it's, really, it's really quite interesting, guys, because there are various ways of removing a, a plant bag. Um, some of you will just grab it and tear it. Um, not the way to do it. Uh, <laughs> there are other ways which make it really simple. I'm just going to demonstrate. I'm not going to actually cut it. So one way is just to slice around the base. Okay. So you put this plant in the hole. Slice around the base, so it's in the hole. Slice around there, and then you just make a slice down the side, and then the sleeve just slips off. Okay, nice and easy. And then you just pull that bottom bit out. Try and keep as much of the soil around this root ball as possible, because that's when things go wrong. That's when we put this plant through what we call transplant stress. Okay, so try and avoid that. When you plant it, next important thing is never to bury the little guy too deep. So we have a general rule in gardening that we say never bury the plant more than the depth of the soil in the nursery bag. So in other words, we don't want to put the soil up to there. Okay? And it might sound so simple, but so many of us get this wrong. Um, the hole's a bit too deep, we're like, oh, should I put more compost there? Yes, you should. You've got to lift that plant up a bit. And importantly, why I'm saying you're going to add compost, and if you're with your topsoil, you're going to have mixed that compost, okay? And then you're going to put it back because most fruit trees need a very well-drained soil. Now, if you're in a, an area where you've got a lot of clay soil, I would then recommend that you add a bit of perlite or even a bit of river sand with your compost and your topsoil, because that will just help the drainage. And most fruit trees hate wet feet, just like us. Don't stand me in a bath of water for three hours. It's going to get ugly, okay? So 
If you've got heavy, heavy clay soil, add a layer of gravel at the bottom, a thick layer of gravel, which means that as the water goes through, it pushes through into the gravel so you don't end up with that wet feet. Okay, so those are the basics. Now that we planted, let's pretend that we are there. So, okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to show you an example of, this is where it, it, it goes wrong. So we planted it, fantastic. Okay, so I need to do a little demo here. Um, oh my God, without making a terrible mess. Okay, right, hold on. So, here is our said fruit tree. Okay, there's our said fruit tree that's been planted. We just need to get a bit more. And I want to show you one of the, the ways where we go wrong. This is where we go wrong, guys. Okay, so fruit tree is in. All right, we've got it to the, the right height. That was the original soil level on the bag. Now what we want to do is we want to do this. We want to create a little berm. Okay, this is important. So we're going to take some of the soil and we're going to make a well, a berm, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so like that. Okay, so we've made a little basin that is level. Okay, fruit tree there in the middle. So there it is. And this, my friends, is probably going to be your number one success to good fruit because this captures the water. So when we water and your fruit trees need a good watering at least once a week, at least once a week or every 10 days, except obviously in the summer rainfall or winter rainfall, wherever you are. So when you water, you want to water softly and gently. Ideally, you want to put a hose pipe here and just let it trickle. So that as it's trickling, the water just fills up gently, drains away. Fills up gently, drains away. Not... <coughs> okay. No, 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 no. So, little bits of water gets trapped in this little berm over here and seeps through gently. Very, very important. Guys, if you can get this right, because the, one of the main reasons for fruit drop, for flower drop, for poor fruiting, is lack of consistent watering. Remember, if the plant is not healthy enough and does not have the right root structure with the right nutrition to be able to hold the right amount of fruit, it can't do it. It's going to abort. So it's going to abort the fruit. Okay, so water is the critical thing. And that's where you do this little berm. Right, but we're not finished yet. The next thing you've got to do is, once you've done that, is mulch. Guys, mulch, mulch, mulch. Now, when we're mulching, it's, it's so important. I mean, this is, the mulch that I've got here um, is stuff that's been put through our shredder. Um, you see there's a few lychee leaves here. Um, this could be just leaves that you've picked up from the garden. It's autumn. There are loads of leaves, guys. Don't tell me you've got to buy it because this is for free. Okay, so you're going to take your mulch, and this is important. I want you to put a thick layer of mulch around the tree. Okay, but notice where I'm putting it. I am not putting the mulch right up to the stem. We're leaving a bit here. If I put the mulch right up to the stem, it could cause collar rot. Okay, so we are mulching around it. This mulch, guys, could be at least 30 centimeters high. At least. And when you do that, you're doing a whole lot of things. Citrus has very fibrous surface roots. So too do avocado pears. And a lot of our fruit trees have those very thin fibrous roots. If those roots remain cool, and if they are un undisturbed, and if they don't get the heat, and when they're there, they can also then get the water. Remember that water that we're trickling through there. So that is what the mulch does. The mulch protects it. It's like a little electric blanket just at the right temperature. It helps to protect the soil. Good gardens begin with good soil. Okay, so there's our layer of mulch. Then, when that mulch breaks down, it turns into this. Oh, caramba. Really? Look at it. Doesn't it look beautiful? This is good, beautiful, organic 
leaf mold. This has been broken down and that's what happens with your mulch. It breaks down, it breaks down, and then that's what it ends up being. And then you put more mulch on top. Do that folks, simple basic rules. Anybody can do this. It doesn't cost you a fortune and you are setting your tree off to a great start, to a great start. Okay, right. Guys, so that is basic, basic planting um, and mulching. Now, when we've got that right, we're then gonna get down to food, feeding. Now, when you, how do we know what soil? Oh, there are lots of questions coming through here. Okay, don't stress about your pH. Generally, fruit trees like a, a pH of 5.5 to about 6.5. Um, so just slightly acidic. But, um, but I wouldn't stress too much about that. Really don't stress about that. What is important is that when you are preparing your soil, if you've got a good black loamy soil, you know it's a good soil. If you've got reddish soil, that if you can form a, um, a, a clod with it, you know you've got a high clay soil, which means that it's not gonna drain well. So then you need to add more leaf mold, more bark chips, maybe some river sand to it, you do, you can also buy pH testers, by the way, from your local garden centre. Okay, but just, just follow what I've told you. Don't get too scientific. Stop, stop, don't, don't, don't go into it too much. Just, just do what I've gone through and you will be okay. All right, now that it comes down to food, 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 because in order to produce that fruit, in order to produce the leaves. Remember, the leaves are the factory of the plant. They are the factory, they need. They need to be big, gorgeous, healthy. Okay, because the leaves are the factory. They absorb the sunlight, photosynthesize, turn, create the sugars, and in turn, will help and feed the fruit. Okay, so if we're not gonna have a good and a well-fed plant, we're not gonna have good fruit. Trees that are poorly fed, that are poorly pruned, generally are what we call sickish plants. They're not that strong. Plants that are not well fed are more susceptible to diseases. They're more susceptible to infections and attacks. So it's important to feed them well, plus, they're really greedy feeders. Okay, so what are we feeding with, guys? There are a couple of things that I want to touch on. Now, when you are when you are going to be feeding your plants, um, there are a couple of alternatives. And I'm going to go through them and tell you what you can use and go through it like that. Right, now. When, with your fruit trees, you want to feed every four to six weeks, especially during the growing season, um, and especially coming up to fruit production. So you've planted with your, um, with your bone meal, you can also add some of any organic fertilizer into that as well. But there are a couple of options. 315 Organic is going to do a really good job. That's three to four handfuls every four to six weeks on top of that mulch. Okay, now why, why are we doing it on top of the mulch, Tanya? Why are you being so serious about that? Because of the following. As you're sprinkling it around, imagine it. It's gonna filter through and fall in between those leaves, just little bits by little bits. It's not gonna be a bang onto the plant. Okay, that makes sense, yes. Yeah, so it's gonna be a gradual releasing of nutrition through those layers. That's why I want you to put it on top of the mulch and then you're gonna give it a very good watering. Uh, Bio-Ocean can also be used, it's pelletalized with chicken litter um, and then the Karnok flower. Either one of these guys is going to do an, a fantastic job for you for providing sustainable nutrition. Um, and what is important is that fruit trees enjoy trace elements. So not only the N, the P, and the K, those are the nitrogen, potassium, and the phosphorus, the phosphorus and the potassium. That is what, so those are the main groups, but fruit trees also need trace elements. They need the trace elements for flower development. Um, 
They need it for strength. They need it for cell wall development. And that can be helped with something like NutriFeed. Guys, it's really simple. Diluted into water. It's very easy. Five liters or five grams, five liters of water. Simply just water it into the plant. Nice and easy. Um, there are also many organic options on the market, which you can also go for. Uh, but what's important is that you use it. Or if you're using a fertilizer, make sure that the fertilizer does also have trace elements. Trace elements is key, is really, really key. Um, I, and I really want you to look at that. But use your fertilizer, follow the instructions. If it says every four to six weeks, do it. Feeding once a year and hoping for miracle results is not going to do it. Okay, so it's a continued, sustained feeding. All right. Now, let's talk about these things. Let's talk about fruit trees. Um, what can go wrong? Um, what are these things called bud unions and grafts and all of that nonsense? Um, what is all that about? Well, it's quite simple, guys. It's quite simple. And I want to show you, and we found this, this guy, and it's, it's actually just a perfect example of what goes wrong. Now, come and have a close look here. I'm going to fold this down. Now, as we said, most of your fruit trees are grafted or budded. Now, have a look here. There it is. It's happening right here. This is the bud. So in other words, this is a type of avocado pear, 100%. A mature bud was taken from a mature tree that's already in fruiting, got the right genetics. It is then inserted into this over here. I'm actually going to open it up so we can just have a look. And then it is tied with budding tape. Now, the budding tape is there for a reason. The budding tape is there to protect this bud union that's been created. And what we call this is a graft. And where did I put my knife? Um, oh, here it is. Let me show you very, very quickly. Let me take this leaf out the way. It'll make, you can have a look at it much easier. And and this is so important, folks, because this is where your orange turns into a lemon or your lemon turns into a rough skin lemon or your avocado pear never gives you pears. <laughs> so let's just take this budding tape off. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. And this is really quite a fascinating process. Um, where we are now going to see, oh, come on, there we go. Let's just get this off. Right, okay, have a look here. Let's get this out of the way. Ha, ah, look there, do you see? There is, what that line is what we call our bud union. So this was grafted, this top part was added onto a strong root stock. And the reason why it is put onto a rootstock is because, especially with avos, some of them are very susceptible to root diseases. Citrus is exactly the same. Um, really uh, not very stable root systems, also susceptible to diseases, which is why they have found rootstock that is disease-free and very good for anchoring. And that is why we take a mature plant, part of the genetics, budded onto here, which is why when you buy a little avo tree like this, it will be able to give you avos within three years, which is why when you buy a young lemon tree, in 18 months you'll have lemons. That is all part of the genetics, which is why. And this is not genetically modified, guys, please. Don't get me wrong. This is not genetically modified. This is called grafting. This is where a mature part of the plant is taken, put onto a chosen rootstock, Okay, and then it speeds up. It just speeds up your production of fruit. Okay, but what can go wrong? <gasps> Look here. So anything below this union, anything below this is what we call the root stock. We don't really want that. And look what's happening here. Look at this that's coming through here. This is the undesirable. <laughs> we don't want this because that is the root stock. That's not where the genetics is of the beautiful creamy avo that we're waiting for. So you want to remove those, please. Get rid of them, because if you don't, and remember I said to you, the rootstock is vigorous and fast and tough. 
it will outgrow this, get taller, and you will end up with no beautiful avos. It will kill this part of the plant eventually, which is why it's very important to inspect your fruit trees, no matter if it's stone fruit, if it's citrus, whatever it is, wherever your graft union is, below that to remove it. Now, another great example, and I'm going to show it to you here. Look here, guys. This is a perfect example of a bud union. So look here. You can see it here. That's where it was grafted. There it is there because you can actually see much thicker. There it is there. So anything below this, please remove it. Very important. But we've spoken about a lot of this in lives. So are we going to not spend too much time on that? Okay. So that is in terms of your, your bud unions um, and taking care of those. Guys, you saw me using the secateur, and I use these secateurs for a reason. Um, it's a great Gardena secateur. This guy is called the Gardena BM. It can cut up to 24 millimeters. So 24 millimeters is about the thickness of my finger, except I won't cut it. Um, remember, secateurs are not loppers. They are not meant to cut huge branches. No, no, no. If you put it in and you're having to force it, you're going to break it. You're going to mess it up. Um, so use the secateurs for their reason. Always remember to clean them. This guy, which I love about it, is that the spring is inbuilt. Okay, the spring is system is inside here. <laughs> which means that the chances of me losing the spring are minimal. Okay, minimal, absolutely minimal. So the spring is in there. I'm not going to lose it. It's got this little rubber thing here. Okay, it's actually hard and plastic. So what does that do? It's called a little mini shock absorber so that when I cut down, there's less jarring on my hand. This is one of their larger secateurs. Of course, there are smaller ones that you can also open and close depending on the size of your hands. Um, but important, it's got the rubber grip which even if you are sweating, you will still have a very good grip on it. It's got a, a coating on the blade, which reduces the sap holding onto it. And this is a bypass cutter. So as you cut, have a look there, as you cut, this blade crosses over the hook. That is called a bypass. And you get a really, really good neat cut. Um, so this is certainly within its width and within its use, a good squeeze. A good squeeze, and there we go. Beautiful cut. Nice. And you see, that's what a bypass does. It does a, it does a really good cut. Okay. Right. Now, we're heading over this way because I want to give you some uh, little tricks on oh, how to deal with the creepy crawlies. Now, guys, they are sure... So you've planted the tree properly, you've got it all going, it's fantastic. Um, oh. You pick your first fruit, the thing's crawling out of it, you bite into it, and this little worm comes out and says, hello. Your, your, your fruit starts going like, all blotchy and, and starts getting like pop, moldy. Okay, there are a lot of things that can go wrong there. But... Um, I want to show you a couple of tricks on, on how you can actually deal with it and what does go wrong. So let's have a look here, um, guys. So what can go wrong? Let's have a look here. Can you see that there? Can you see those little bubbles? Okay. Those little bubbles are called citrusilla. Okay. Okay. This is one thing. Do you see? There they are on the back of the leaf. Those little black things, small little tiny black things. Those are the little nymphs. They embed themselves on the back of the leaf. They complete their, their breeding cycle. They're sucking the sap, like when a mosquito bites you, and it sucks the, the, the blood out of you. That's what these little things do. And what they do is they impair the growth of the tree, plus they can eventually impair the amount of fruit. This thing over here, do you see those little lines, squiggly lines? That's called leaf mana. Okay? Leaf mana also eventually results in that. Horrible thing. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And also removes the chlorophyll, removes all the nutrition out of the leaves. I mean, we've got a sure mass, mass 
infestation of things going on here. And then, of course, we've got beautiful aphids. Aphids, those sucking insects um, that remove all the nutrition out of the leaves, generally on the tops, on the tips. And when that happens, they impair the growth of the tree. Okay, so, and the other thing that can go wrong is fruit flies and false codling moths. So how do we deal with those? Okay, I want to give you some organic ways to deal with it, some quick tips. And this works really, really well, guys. So number one, imagine if this was our fruit tree. There it is, trunk of my fruit tree. Okay, um, we are there. Everybody has got, well, let's, let's rephrase that. Most people have a pair of stockings. Of course I've got a pair of stockings. Come on. <laughs> I want you to take an old pair of stockings because all of these, especially aphids, especially these little, little guys over here, which are your primarily primary cause of diseases and and hojos and other nunus because from the aphids you get sooty mold, from the aphids you get scale. Oh, it's like this whole terrible, terrible situation. Um, but the primary cause for most of these being prolific is ants. Ants. Ants don't kill plants. No, they don't. Black ants do not kill plants. But what ants do and who they look after kills the plant. So ants actually farm these aphids. True story. They actually farm them. So if you've got these aphids or scale on your lemon tree, your fruit tree, whatever it is, look down the stem. You'll see ants crawling up and down. What ants do, they're very smart. They take the aphids and they move them around the tree. They move them. They farm them. They are their slaves. Okay? And the ants also protect the aphids from their natural predators, which are ladybirds and little wasps. Yeah. So when, when the ladybird comes along, that ants just, they go and they chase them away. Uh, so... Get rid of the ants and you've got a much better chance of getting rid of these things without having to use hectic, hectic chemicals. So what I recommend that you do is you take some stocking and you tie it around the base of your fruit tree. Okay, right. Um, and then, I remember we've got to stop the ants. Okay, stop the ants. And then you take some good old Vaseline, you know, blue seal Vaseline. Should have paid us some money for the sponsorship. <laughs> Vaseline. And all I want you to do is put some Vaseline on the stocking. So now what we've done is, and you've got you to check this out, okay? Obviously because the Vaseline doesn't last forever. But I want you to put the Vaseline around this. Now ants are very clever. They're all so smart. So you're going to do that all the way around. I'm not going to carry on all the way around. But the ants come up here. They can't cross over. And then they go and find another root. But let me tell you, they will find another root. If there's a branch that's touching the floor, they will find that branch. They will climb up. If there is a stake holding up your fruit tree, you've got to put the Vaseline around it as well because they will find a way. They will, if they're desperate, they will make a little ant bridge to climb across each other to get there because without the ants, your aphids will not carry on prolif proliferating. Gee, that's a big word. They will continue, they will stop doing that, and then you will break the life cycle. Okay, very important. The other thing that you can do is quite simple. This is for what we call, this is for false coddling moth. Now, false and, and coddling moth is when you have got a fruit, and you cut it, and there's a pupa inside, a worm, and it starts coming. Most of us think that is fruit fly. Most times it's actually the false coddling moth or the true coddling moth. Okay, and what happens is in the soil around the fruit tree, the, they hatch, okay. Then the female climbs up. She's wingless. She climbs up. If you've got this, ah, 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 can't climb over, okay. She normally climbs over, goes up, lays her eggs. Those, lays her eggs into the fruit, okay. That egg hatches larva and it's, it's not, the, the larva doesn't cause the decaying fruit, it's the sting that causes the decaying fruit. And as that larva is growing, it's eating through the decaying fruit, pops out, and then carries on with its life cycle. Um, which is important during, which is why it's important during your winter months when you've done your pruning, 
to also then spray around the base of the tree with something like oleum or lime sulfur so that you can kill any eggs, spores, um, hibernating nymphs, whatever they are that are living in the soil. It's really important. So another trick that you can also do, take some good old duct tape, okay? Good old duct tape. And what I want you to do is take it like this and you're going to put it around the stem, okay? But you're putting the non-sticky side against it. Around, okay? Around, around. Stick it over the other guy, okay? We can come back and then we just cut it off. And what happens here, this is a perfect, perfect mechanism for stopping the nymphs from being able to climb up because they get onto here, sticky, yucky, don't work. Okay, so that's for the coddling moth, which we all have, we just might not know we have it. So you start treating as soon as you've got your first young fruit, please. That's when I want you to start treating. Okay, the other thing that affects Ooh, telling me I've got 20 minutes left. Yeah, it's <laughs> getting a bit hectic. Okay, the, um, the other thing is fruit fly. Now, guys, with fruit fly, um, my goodness, um, there are many varieties of fruit fly. I'm not going to go into all of them, but they really cause havoc. They cause havoc in the, in the citrus industry as well. Um, and what they do is they sting the fruit, um, once again, for the egg, uh, for continuing their life cycle. And there are ways of getting rid of it. And I'm going to show you a couple of methods of how you can deal with them. Now, the one is as soon as your fruit is the size of a marble. As soon as your fruit is the size of the marble, for coddling moth and for um, fruit fly, you can start spraying with cypromethrin. Guys, it's a very simple dilution. It's one mil into one liter of water. And you spray it as a full cover spray. Okay, that will do the trick. This is a combat product. The other ways that you can do it, and this is for looking after the, um, the false coddling moth, is to use the Pest Pro. Guys, Pest Pro is an organic, it's a bio fungicide, it works brilliantly. This is very simple, it's two grams, so it's one little sachet into one liter of water, and then I want you to spray it on. So you would do this weekly, almost as a preventative. Do you understand? Okay, it's very, very important for the false coddling moth to do that. Um, for, and your, your, your disease, your Lava Pro is obviously for all the creepies, and you can do that as well. But Lava Pro also very, very importantly does leaf mana. Okay, so that's that thing that we saw. It does the leaf mana. Guys, all of these are available at your local garden center. So get out and use them. They, they work, that's why they're there. The another way that you can deal with your fruit fly is very simple is to make your own fruit fly bait station. Now, this is very easy, guys. Um, all I want you to do, I was hoping to actually make a mixture for you, but time is of the essence, so I'm not going to. All it is is a plastic bottle. We've burnt a few little holes here. Now, it's important that you don't make these holes too big. A fruit fly is literally six millimeters in diameter. Or in, in, in length, yeah, it's small, it's small guys. Okay, so keep these holes very small or else what's gonna happen is you are going to attract the good things into here. So the good bugs are gonna end up drowning here. We don't want bees going in these holes. We don't want wasps, okay? We just want the fruit fly. The yellow works as a stimulant, they attract it to the yellow and you can see I've just tied a little piece of wire over here, nice and easy. So into your mixture, it's very easy. Two grams of yeast, ordinary yeast, okay? Two grams of yeast into a liter of lukewarm water. It act activates the yeast. We then need something for the yeast to feed on. 80 grams of sugar into that. Mix it all up, put it into the bottle, hang this by your fruit tree. You don't need to fill it up. You only need it about that far, okay? Right, hang it up. The fruit flies are gonna be attracted. They're gonna come, only they, only, only them can fit through that little hole. Unless you've got a, I've got a picture of Maya the bee being really gluttony and trying to squeeze through the hole. But no, no, it was Maya's friend, Willie. What was his name? Willie. It was Willie. He was like always getting into trouble. Okay, so we don't want bees in there, which is why I want you to keep those holes very, very um, small. Okay, so, so that, that's one, a great way to use as a fruit fly trap. Um, 
We've spoken about the codling moth with the duct tape and with the Vaseline, which is the ants. Um, and very important, interesting to know that the codling moth, once it has emerged from your fruit, it's emerged from the fruit now, it's eaten, desiccated, done its stuff. It then, like a parachuter, it spins a web. So this worm drops a web, parachutes down to the soil. <laughs> and then buries itself for its next life cycle, for when it will then emerge as the female. Okay, view the cube. Right, let's have a look here. Oh, I need a sip of water, wherever it is. Um, ah, and, oh, okay, I'll get to that in a second. Let's see what's happening here. Ooh, I've been locked out. <laughs> um, guys, I, I know there's, there's a lot, but um, just take it, take it one bit at a time. And if you need to re-watch to get some of these hints and tips that, that I've given you, then um, please do. Okay, uh, where is my cue? Right. Um, do fruit trees in containers need more regular feeding? Uh, no, no. Your fruit trees do not need more feeding in containers, but they are going to need more watering because your fruit trees in the ground, you're also going to be watering every or feeding every four to six weeks. So that would be the same in your containers, but they will need more water because remember, they don't have that beautiful network of roots that is going out in search. They don't have that. They're all sitting over here. Okay, can we plant nasturtiums and marigolds at the base of the tree to help with pests? Yes, of course you can. Yes, do that. Do that, do that, please. Um, you can do that and it won't really affect the collar or, or any of that. A very important thing that I just want to touch on um, is this and come across to the whiteboard here. Um, this is very, very, very important. So if this is my fruit tree, okay, uh, da -da 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 -da. here's my fruit tree, okay. Branches going out two meters, okay? Do you see that? Okay, here we've got our, our little berm, okay, where we're watering. From there, where the leaves are, the outermost, down, all the way around the plant. That is called the drip zone. That is called the drip zone. When you are fit, and this, it's called the drip zone because this is where all the little fibrous roots, this is how far they can go out, the feeding roots. So when you're fertilizing, you have got to fertilize from the outermost leaves to the center. That is called our drip zone. And when you're watering, you can also do that. When you're mulching, you do that as well. All of that. And you don't go fiddling and digging around over there because that's when you're going to disturb those beautiful fine root hairs. Um, and feeders. Okay, right. Let's get down to some pruning, guys, because uh, pruning is a is sure, pruning is a is a big thing. It really is a big thing. Just one, just one note, and we have covered this before. But guys, remember that when you have got rid of the cellar, when you have got rid of the cellar, you will no longer see these little little black nymphs stuck underneath, but you will still continue to have the bumps. Okay, so those you can, you can just break off, you can cut off, but normally it always affects your new growth. So your new growth, you need to look out for that. Okay, radio. Um, I want to talk about bananas because uh, I, I think more people need to plant these, these beauties. Um, and uh, this is the Williams banana. Um, the Williams banana is not a tree, actually. Uh, a banana is the tallest, tallest herb. Mm, it's not a tree. No, it's the tallest herb. Um, bananas grow from a rhizome, which is at the, at the bottom here. They grow from a rhizome. They're thick and fleshy. Um, and as you can see here by, it's very, very thick and fleshy. And if you have bought some bananas of late, you will know how expensive they are. So why not grow your own? And if you've got monkeys, you can still get away with how to grow them. So. Um, banana, this is the Williams banana, which is by far one of the most prolific bearers, um, part of the Cavendish um, variety of bananas, and this is what's used mostly in commercial farming. Now, when you plant a banana, you're going to follow exactly the same rules that I've given, except, 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 there is one thing 
that you're, you're not going to do. You're going to change it up, which is why I wanted to go to the banana. That when you are pruning it, so when you are removing any dead leaves, and all I want you to do is simply just cut these leaves, okay? Cut them up like that, and I want you to use those around the base as a mulch. I want you to mulch it. It's a tropical plant. It loves water, so loads and loads of water, and keep it well mulched. And you can go quite high up the stem here because it's not going to rot. That doesn't happen in bananas, okay, because it's thick, it's fleshy, and it just loves moisture. The thing with a banana takes about nine months to grow. When it's grown, it's then going to produce its first bunch, okay. So you get a bunch of bananas, okay, which is the thing, the whole thing. You get a hand, which are the different layers of the bananas, and the individual bananas are called fingers, okay. Um, I, I want to get, stay where you are, I want to get a, um, some, some bananas to, to explain this. Um, so, so you got a finger, okay, this whole thing that we remove from the tree is called a hand. Now, ideally, especially if you've got monkeys, is to remove the, the, the whole bunch of bananas whilst it's green. How do you know when it's ready? So initially the fruit faces downwards. When the fruit starts facing upwards, it starts turning upwards, okay, and they're no longer those hard ridges on the edge of the banana. Hard ridges, then you know it's good to cut. The easiest way to cut a bunch of bananas is by using the simplest gardening tool in the world, um, and that's a hacksaw blade. Uh, it's, it, it cuts through it very simply, and I will show you just exactly how it works. It, it, I mean, a hacksaw blade, you can either leave it on here or you can take it off, but I'll show you how easily it cuts through this. And hacksaw blades work very, very simply. Okay, so. So what you can do then is you've cut your bunch, you then use your hacksaw blade and you cut the hands off because the hands flare out like that. And then you can ripen them at different stages according to your needs. So you put them down and if you want it to ripen, you cover it with newspaper or you put a ripe, ripped, a ripe, you don't get ripe, a ripe apple with the newspaper. The ripe apple emits ethylene, that's that smell of, of bananas, you know when a banana is kind of going over, it emits that. That is a natural gas that's emitted from the from a ripening fruit or a ripe fruit, and it helps to stimulate the ripening of a banana. Nice and simple, okay? So you can then control it. The rest you can leave green. When the banana is finished, when you have taken off its one bunch, it only makes one bunch, you then cut it down. It's gone. It's a herb, remember? It's not a tree like these, but good news is, and look at this, that's already happening, and this poor guy really needs to get out into the garden. Once it is over, you are going to simply just cut the banana off about 30 centimeters from the base, cut it off there, and then several suckers are going to emerge. These are the suckers, which are really pushing up. That's the next generation. Bananas walk. That they seriously do. And think about it. Here was my adult. Here's my next sucker. So when that one's grown and I cut that one down, the next sucker is going to come up here. So I planted it there and now it's here. Bananas walk. Ooh. <laughs> ah, could be a far side joke there. Anyway, if you've got more than three, four suckers, please choose one or two suckers and let them emerge. Preferably actually just one sucker. One sucker per plant because the others then remove too much of the nutrition and energy and you're not going to get a very good bunch of bananas. So you cut those off. When you have cut this guy down, you are going to simply chop it up. Chop it up, chop it up, chop it up and place it around the base. Okay, to trap all that moisture in. Nice and easy. Okay, right. Another thing I want to talk about and we had a question about sandy soil. How do I deal with sandy soil? When you're talking about that these fruit trees like a lot of organic matter and they're going to need some, some fertilizing in that. Well, guys, I've spoken about hydrocash. You know it. Um, you know how it works. Remember, there are two schools of thought here. Number one, you're feeding with an organic um, plant food. So you're feeding with either 315 organic 
um, or you're going to then and you're going to be using your mulch so you're going to be adding good organic content plus we can tweak the soil and the way that we tweak the soil is by using hydrocash which has got also carbon loaded so what this means is the hydrocash is a granule it's a wettable granule we mix this in with that compost that bag of compost and that topsoil mix it in when planting <coughs> excuse me and then when you're watering it the hydrocash granule granules swell okay so they swell and they hold the water they hold it especially if you you down there if you're in cape town pe um, south coast where your soil is really really poor this would be important so the hydrocash then holds the moisture but not too much, which is why you're going to follow the instructions and it literally is one or two teaspoons in a bucket of compost. So dry. You're going to add this in dry, hey? dry into your mixture. You can also add it in wet, but when preparing for fruit trees that you are planting, I would su suggest that you just sprinkle the dry hydrocash over your compost, mix it in because there it is, that's what it looks like. And remember when we add a bit of water to it, When we add a wee bit of water, there it goes. It sucks it all up and starts expanding, holding all that water. When the plant needs it, it then simply just takes it back. Okay, really good to, to remember and use, and not, a, not only with fruit trees, hanging baskets, containers, man, the list is endless. Okay, few other things that I want to touch on is pruning. Pruning, guys, happens during winter, all right? So late winter, early spring if you have to, but, and this is especially for your deciduous fruit trees. But I do think we should probably do an entire segment one day just on pruning. Um, there are a couple of tools that you're going to need. You're going to need a good lopper. Now, guys, this Gardena lopper is made from aluminium. Um, it's got a stainless steel blade, which is then also coated to help with ease of cutting and it also then helps in terms of this anything sticking to it. Um, this can cut up to 42 mils in thickness. 42 mils, that's quite a big guy, okay? Um, this over here is called the Easy Cut 500B Lopper, okay? 900 grams, nice and simple. It's got this thing over here, which is for shock, shock absorption, okay? Now, when we're cutting, when we're cutting, um, I want to show you very, very quickly. When we are using our lopper and we're going to be cutting, and this you would use for, especially for larger fruit trees, if you're going to be doing some corrective pruning. Um, remember when using your lopper, it's not, it's not that movement. It's not, it's, it's squeeze. It's squeezing in. So get into, get into it, grab it, and then squeeze. It is not... <laughs> It is not this. It is not this. Here it is, here it is. No, it's not that, but I know you do it because you think, nah, 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 I will get you. No, 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 we're not having any bad dreams here. Absolutely not. Um, so remember, it's around it, around it, and squeeze in. Squeeze in to get a good cut. That's what's important. Um, this little guy can get into places, and remember, all of your Gardena products will have a 25-year warranty, okay? Very important. Now, what if the fruit's on the other side of the fence, guys? What if it's gone to the neighbor? Oh, I get that. What if it isn't your fruit tree? <laughs> and it's also over there, you know what I mean? Like, just hanging over the wall. Or it's just out of reach. Um, <laughs> well, it's minding the light, Tanya. There are ways of, 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 getting, of getting to your fruit, and that would certainly be with the fruit picker. Uh, guys, we invested in one of these, and I'll tell you, you're, it makes life so much easier. So the fruit picker um, works well. It's got the little bag here. It's got these little notches, and that makes sense, you know, so that when you can grab the fruit, um, pear's not a very good example, but if you grab it, that's where it is, and then you can just pull it, okay? Now I'm doing it the wrong way around, but I'm trying to show you. So you grab it and then pull it, and it breaks off from 
we can actually do something here. Yes, come, let's go over here. This thing is very long, which is why it's very good for the neighbors. Okay, so you just get it in there, grab it, and then you just give it a tug and it'll pull off. So here we are. I don't want to break anything here or break this fruit tree that I'm meant to be returning. Um, but that would be a good way, especially with fruit that's over the wall. Anyway, uh, the other good thing about this is part of the combi system. Now, what do we mean by combi system? Well, that's very simple. The combi system means that this can work on other. So you can use this pole. You can then buy an attachment which has the saw on it or it has even one of the choppers. So you can use the pole to then deal with many other garden problems. So you're not having to buy another product, another whole tool for a separate product. Okay, so let me just get this guy back on here. Now, what I do want to show you is the following. Um, if I can get this guy back on here. Very importantly, with this fruit picker is the following. Do you see this here? Okay, so you can unclip that, all right, and you can adjust it. So depending on where the fruit is, you'll feel the little ridge, okay, Feel the ridge and then you can just, so there, depending on where your fruit is in the garden, you can still then adjust this and pick it. The great news about this, guys, is <laughs> it, so in full heart with an average person um, using this product, you can get to approximately 3.9 meters. See, there's the end. Look there, there's Mason. Here's the end of the fruit picker. You can get up to 3.9, depending on your height. This full length is 2.9 meters. Um, so, yeah, don't worry about the neighbor. I won't even know that you've done it. Uh, but really good in terms of getting your fruit off and getting it off by eight, not having to hit it with a stick. And then it bruises and it falls and, yeah. Also, if your fruit falls on the floor, guys, very important, if your fruit falls on the floor, you've got excess fruit, please pick it up. And if you're not going to use it, bury it. Because that is perfect breeding grounds for fruit fly, coddling moth, and any other hohos and nunus. Very, very important. Um, very, very quickly, um, I want to just touch on pruning, guys. It's... Um, there, there, are, there are very sophisticated ways to prune. But the bottom line that I want to tell you is the following. And I think, Mason, come along here so we can do a quick drawing to show some basic pruning. Because the trick with pruning is that with all your fruit trees, you want essentially a vase shape. Okay. They say a well-pruned apple tree is a tree that a bird can fly through without touching any of the branches. Ha. Huh. Okay. So when pruning, guys, we want to work with what we call these, which are the, the gardening word is called scaffolds. Outward facing, so we want a vase shape. Any spindly little thin branches, remove. Keep that open vase shape and I would recommend that you take off your leader. You take off your leader except in a pair, okay? Take that leader off so we can get that open vase shape. The other important thing is that you remove any dead or diseased and come along with me and have a look here. And I'm going to show you a very, very good example of how they have removed the leader. Look at this. This is, what have we got here? We've got a peach tree. We've got a peach tree. Here is the leader. And the leader was actually pruned. And that's important. That leader must be pruned off because here already are our scaffolds starting to form. There's one scaffold there. There's another scaffold there. But we've got this down the bottom. No, because this, look where it's going. It's going up and one of the golden rules of pruning fruit trees is remove any crossed branches. Look at this here. If I, where, where this is going to grow, these two are going to meet. They are going to cross. So we're going to end up with a crossed branch. We don't want crossed branches because what that does is it eliminates the light, it eliminates the airflow 
fruit in order to develop needs light. So we take that guy off, okay? Also, over here, looking at this with this truss, what I would rather do is, I would rather keep one main truss. So I'm taking that off. This is gonna be my main scaffold. Do you see that there? My main scaffold. I'm gonna prune that back slightly. When I do that, this thickens out, okay? And we'll then, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that off and that spindly, and there's my main truss. And I am also gonna take that off. So it looks quite radical, but you gotta stick with me because this is the way we do it. Because all of these here, do you see where there are two of these here? There we go. There is, that is where our fruit is gonna come from, right there, right over there, that little cluster. Okay, so. There you go, you can see the nice scaffold developing. This thin, wispy thing over here, get rid of it. This other thin, wispy thing, get rid of it. Here's our other scaffold, which we want to keep. Um, so right the same here. We will just prune, I'm not gonna prune this back because I want it to balance off with this. This, I will remove this spindly one here and same I will do there. Because now look what we're doing. We're opening it up and we are getting those two lovely scaffolds. Same over here, I would, in fact, this is gonna grow terribly. This we can keep, so I'm gonna take that off. A cross branch, look, perfect example. Cross branch going on here, get rid of it, and likewise, take that off there. Okay, and this, we will just prune back, and there are our scaffolds. One, two, three, and you see the way they're going out? Open vase shape, and that is what we want. This, we can just cut that back a bit. We can leave that there to get a bit of growth on, but that is basically what we're looking at. Now, you might be saying, Tanya, there's nothing left of the tree. Um, that it's got to be radical, and in your first three years of any fruit tree, that is the most important time when you control and you shape and you get it right. It's so important. If you don't, by the time that tree is five years old, it's going to have grown crooked, its leaders are going to be there, and you are certainly going to find it a way more difficult job. And you're not only going to need a lopper to get that right, you're probably going to need a chainsaw. Um, so, uh, keep it vase shape, remove dead and diseased, prune before the end of winter, um, and if you really have to, early spring, and feeding, feeding, feeding. Okay. Guys, it's a big topic, um, I, I, I know, and um, I'm feeling a bit uh, frazzled because we've been trying to get through so much, but they're those basic things that you've got to get right, okay? We spoke about the planting. We spoke about the right management of your tree, so the ways that you can deal with it. And remember, coming down to the pruning, which is the last thing that we spoke about, by opening up the plant and by allowing air flow through, and light, the more light you have, the better, more flowers you're gonna have, the more flowers you have, the more fruit. Also, on a last tip, is that your first three years of production, if, you're, if you have 10 young fruit, no matter what it is, on your plant, remove half, remove half. Let those five grow and develop because the plant is then putting all its energy into that, so you'll get five good fruit instead of 10 like eh, 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 so, so, mediocre. Watering is critical and feeding. Feed with liquid plant foods, feed every four to six weeks with an organic, 315 Atlantic Bio Ocean, Stark Airs. Guys, find it and use it because if you want sweet fruit, if you want big, delicious, gorgeous fruit, that's what you need to do. Um, sure, have I missed anything? Heck, guys, of course, if you're into all of this, which I certainly hope you are, you are most, ex most certainly going to need Grow to Eat magazine. Guys, our Grow to Eat magazine is on shelf now. This is going to take you right through autumn and right through winter. Of course, the yummy recipes in here. What to grow, how to grow, what to sow, um, and, and how to prune um, in lots of detail. So 
please take a look out for your Grow to Eat magazine. Um, it's 96 pages full of goodness, guys. Um, you can also subscribe to this online at thegardener.co.za. And can you believe it? Our May issue of The Gardener and Detainee magazines are on sale now. Um, have a look out for them. Winter doesn't have to be dreary. No. Um, it can be quite pimped and lots and lots of color guys a huge shout out to stark airs and to gardena our sponsors for today's segment um i hope that you've enjoyed it as much as i've enjoyed running around the studio um, and sharing uh, a bit on fruit trees of course there's so much more um, but do you remember if you've got any questions that we will get back to them later today or early tomorrow morning thank you all so much for lending me your ears and your hearts um, and most importantly god bless you and you and Happy gardening. The Gardener Masterclass was proudly brought to you by Stark Airs HydraCash, an innovative water-wise gardening solution. Carbon load your garden and help retain water for your plants as they need it. And Gardena, realize your garden dreams with innovative, high-quality gardening tools. Feel your passion every season. Calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, The Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za.